a momentous return to the stage. The iconic music hall is back open for business. 60 months of renovations complete. This is a major event in our life as musicians. The final touches and first sound checks of the season, plus the newly discovered treasures. Every time you open a wall, you, know, you find something that you didn't quite expect. The Tri-State is all ears. This weekend, the music comes home. It's the grand reveal for the majority of the Tri-State. Your home for music, ballet, and the opera is fully restored after a stunning renovation over the past year and a half. On any given day, 200 to 300 workers were here. Swarming music hall, construction tools are gone now. We can now listen to the instruments that bring this historic Cincinnati icon to life. Good morning, Tri-State. We are in Washington Park, and I'm Chris Riva. I'm Catherine Nero. Thank you so much for joining us for The Music Comes Home as we celebrate the grand reopening of this beautiful building. And it is. It's right behind us. It's the backdrop for our live broadcast, our special coverage here this morning. And, of course, they've had a couple of performances mm -hmm. over the last couple of days. Let's listen into some of the music that we could hear from last night. The sights and sounds of a world-class orchestra. Now, of course, Catherine and I are outside. But Evan Millward is inside, and that's really where you're going to see the big differences. And Evan, what can you show us about the new look of Music Hall? Well, Catherine and Chris, let me say it is good to be able to see you out in Washington Park from in here in the Grand Foyer. It's one of the first things you'll notice as you walk in to the refreshed Music Hall is how open it truly is this morning. As you can see the vistas uh, from glass doors there and then walk into the refreshed Edith Lindner Grand Foyer here. We talked about finishing touches. They're still putting some last minute detail work in here. And in a few minutes, we're going to take you inside to give you an artist view inside Springer Auditorium. That is what's truly impressive about this building. Evan, can't wait to see more sights from inside the historic music hall coming up from you in a few moments. We're talking about a one hour special here this morning. It truly is an hour. It is. So what that means is during every commercial break, we want you to go to Facebook. We're going to be streaming this live. So not only will you see the special that you'll be seeing on television, but in addition to that, we've got exclusive Facebook only content that only our Facebook viewers can see. Log on right now, a full 60 minutes of music hall coverage. And by the way, while you're there, like our Facebook page and Really, ours as well, right? Oh, sure. Catherine Nero, Chris Riva. That'd be great. And, uh, and ask questions on the WCPO Facebook page. We'll be answering them. And if you have questions about what's going on, what else we're going to be covering, we'll have all the answers for you right there. Also, you can visit Music Hall yourself this morning, and we'll give you the details on getting a tour so you can see it firsthand live here in Washington Park. First, though, the, the orchestra has been in here all week, and it's been really yeah. interesting because this is their first experience right. inside as well. So we want to give you a couple of the highlights of some of their rehearsals so far. Late this week, the orchestra meticulously rehearsing each note. CSO musical director Louis Langre conducting every instrument with the same attention to detail that has been paid to this iconic performance space, both blending together for performance to remember. Music is home, rehearsed, and ready for the Tri-State to see. Now that rehearsal was from Thursday, and they've been really working on this all week long. But now, as of last night, the orchestra has an actual concert under its belt. And it was interesting, kind of fun for one music hall fan or symphony fan. They were able to get to see the show or performance last night from a very special seat. I am very interested to hear what goes on. I want to hear what the acoustics are. We Seems to be an awful lot of attention paid to that. We've been at the TAF for two years, so it'd be interesting to see that comparison too. I've been coming here since I was a kid and haven't been 
in many years, and tonight seemed like a, a good night to come and see it. Now, of course, yesterday, the official ribbon cutting ceremony. This was yesterday morning on the steps of the grand performance space. It's been months in the making. Tremendous amount of dignitaries were there, local politicians, and obviously they are getting to see firsthand for themselves the multi-million dollar renovation. Now, 3CDC was kind of the organization behind this renovation that kind of coordinated it all. And we've got new time-lapse video from the Music Hall Renovation Project that 3CDC provided. These are the changes inside Springer Auditorium. That's what we all, uh, that's the auditorium we all know and love here at Music Hall. It's about a year and a half's worth of work summed up in just about well 30 seconds I guess. <laughs> so today you know we're in we're in uh, Washington Park outside Music Hall and this place is going to be packed all day for a big arts wave event starting at 10 o'clock this morning. So you can also enjoy those moments as well and you can also come down for your, yourself and see it firsthand. You can also bring the entire family down to not only see that but also the other additions here. We're talking about the Otto and Buttig Theater which is the home of the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company and the expanded ensemble theater Cincinnati which will open for the first time to the public as well. And then there will be stages set up here in Wash Park for free performances. There'll be more than 50 free different performances during the event hosted by Artswave and it is happening from 10 until 3 and guess what no tickets are required. And what's also cool about this is in addition to I mean the Shakespeare the Otto and Buttig Theater is unbelievable down there but also the Cincinnati uh, the Contemporary Arts Museum is offering free uh, free tickets or free admission today so it's not just here in Washington Park it's all over the area that Artswave is celebrating. This is like the headliner right. but everything today is all about the arts And in it's Cincinnati. curb appeal the Buttig Theater really beautiful, beautiful when you drive by beautiful. it as well as when you drive by and see the new look here of Music Hall. Speaking of which just about everything in this historic building had some kind of nip or tuck and uh, maybe most importantly stayed on budget and finished on time. Not on your sides, Ryan Houston gives you a look. Music has a new home and it only cost about $143 million. I've got a laser pointer too to help when I explain things. Project manager Jeff Martin and his team over at 3CDC have been working on the renovation at Music Hall for about three or four years. And after 15 months of construction work, the show is ready to start. Look around, it's, it's beautiful. Our, our team did such a good job the consultants, the contractors, um, that, you know, it's, it kind of speaks for itself. It does, but during our tour, we asked about four big changes people will notice when they come to Music Hall. The first thing you'll see is changes to the facade or the front of the building. They removed 70% of the bricks that were blocking windows. The thing to note is it's a National Historic Landmark and a historic tax credit project. So because of that, there's kind of an extra level of care. Um, and an extra level of craftsmanship as a result that's required. It also was a must for them to declutter the lobby. They changed the painting scheme and lighting. Crews also got rid of storefronts in the lobby to pull people north and south into other lobby spaces. We wanted to make the architecture sing. We want to make this space feel grand. Um, it did before, but it was starting to get kind of a little heavy, you know, so we wanted to give that experience back to the building. A lot of work went into updating Springer Auditorium while making it still feel the same. They moved back walls to help with the acoustics, pull the stage further out into the room, and also air and heat will come from below the seats along with more new lighting. It'll feel very similar and comfortable for a lot of people. There was a little bit of anxiety, you know, that we're, our changes are going to be too drastic. Um, and there's response we've heard so far that it still feels like music hall. Corbett Tower also got a little TLC. It's a room that can be used for pre or post function. They raised the ceiling about another 16 feet and restored stenciling that they found after raising that ceiling. This room got one of the biggest makeovers. It's a national historic landmark. It's a 250,000 square foot historic building. So every time you open a wall, um, you know, you find something that you didn't quite expect, you know, or the bricks are crumbling. Um, so to fit in all that technology um, was really tricky. 250 construction workers sometimes worked six or seven days a week to finish the job on time and on budget. They added 31,000 square feet of space without changing the building's footprint. Those behind the project say this makeover is allowing music to come home in a very big way. Ryan Houston, nine on your side. Ryan, thank you. And of course, that music starting a little bit here later at the end of this week. So how do we get to this point for mm -hmm. this weekend? Let's take a look back of why this is so important here in the city of Cincinnati for the arts community. So as Ryan pointed out, a lot went on inside. It ended up being a $143 million renovation. It took about a year and a half. 
And in addition to all the cool stuff that Ryan was talking about, the bathrooms and elevators, they needed updating. There weren't enough uh, of either, really. The heating and air conditioning, as he mentioned, they were old. Now they're all kind of reconfigured. Uh, this was managed by 3CDC, the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation, funded by public and private money. Remember, that was a big question mark. There were some historic tax credits. Uh, the building closed in June 1st of last year, and everything inside kind of scattered. Some went to the TAF, some went to other places, the air and off and such. But everybody's back, and again, today, uh, this weekend, the big day, the big grand reopening celebration. And so Evan Miller has been inside yes. checking things out. He's got kind of a, a cool vantage point from in there. So it's beautiful out here, but Evan, let's see what it looks like inside. Well, I'll tell you, Chris and Catherine, this is a vantage point that very few people get because this is what you see if you are playing in the symphony. That's what the stage is set up for. They had opening night last night. They play again tonight and you can take a look out. We are literally in the house on stage. That is one of the biggest differences uh, that these musicians have had to adjust to. Uh, a lot of other symphonies do this where they play kind of in front of the stage and there it's an intimate experience to the folks who are watching. It wasn't like that in the old Springer Auditorium. Now it is. And so here it is. The stage can be adjusted in size and height. Uh, and then Obviously what we know and love, the chandelier, each crystal cleaned, individually rewired, uh, LED lighting now. Springer Auditorium looks much like you remember, but it is fresher, it is sharper, it is cleaner, and it's really something to behold. Evan, thank you. You know, just about everything went according to plan here, but that doesn't mean they expected everything. There are some surprises that yeah. crews found. And some some really awesome. Now on your sides, Tamika Artist shows you some of those lost treasures that they rediscovered in this construction process. There is something magical inside these yeah. halls. Watch your step. And beyond the once plastered walls of Corbett Tower, a colorful hidden treasure. You can see the all this beautiful stenciling. Our tour guide, Music Hall Preservationist Ed Ryder, only allowed us to give you a sneak peek of the elaborate Victorian painting on the walls and ceiling. It was uncovered by work crews during demolition, all of it painstakingly recreated through microscopic color analysis. People will love the colors. It actually looks very contemporary. And then there are these vast natural light attracting windows overlooking the carriageway. They started working on the plaster and a chunk fell out and it's like, wait a minute, there's a window back here. Yet another delightful discovery, they too were found still intact from the 1800s after being bricked over decades ago in an attempt to cut down on heating and cooling costs. Peel back years of wear and tear. Standing back from the building, a lot of people just never noticed it. And outside, crews discovered still another architectural masterpiece etched on the face of this musical icon. We have put back as much of the black brick detail as possible. Creative details and patterns that were lost when the exterior was sandblasted during the last major renovation some 40 years ago, now recreated to their original design precisely the way Hannaford envisioned it in the late 1800s. All of these fine artistic treasures rediscovered once again just adds to the mystery and magic of Music Hall. It's spectacular now. It's going to be more spectacular. <laughs> Tamika Artist, nine on your side. Tamika, thank you. And uh, ahead, we've seen the restoration, but we're going to take a look at it from a unique perspective. That's right. We're going to meet the photographer and the musician who captured the changes from inside Music Hall. The results now on display for everyone to see. And I'm giving you a fair warning. Now is the time to grab that phone, get on Facebook Live right now, because only our Facebook users are going to get to see the changes made specifically for you. Bigger seats, more restrooms. Go to WCPO9 on your side on Facebook. We'll be back live from your Music Hall after the break. Welcome back to Music Comes Home. You know, one of the musicians who calls Music Hall mm -hmm. home is also a photographer. You know, as we toss it back inside to Evan Millward, he's really followed his story, not only with the CSO, but if you will, one of his passions as well outside of performing. And Evan, this has been Catherine and I's perch here for all of our Luminosity specials. Right. You have been following the story of Matt Zori for quite some time. 
Yeah, for uh, a year or so now, and I'll tell you what has been so cool about following this process was that late last week they allowed Matt to hang up some of his uh, his photographs here in a new space just off the lobby and, and to tout his book that's coming up. So we are in the PNG Founders Lounge. It's a new space. One of the biggest complaints people had was there was no place to sit down and relax before a show before. That has all changed, and if you're in here, take some time because each of these photos tells a story about the people who got us to this point. His pictures are like a finishing touch. I totally backed into this project. As the building continues to come together. Do these two speak to each other? So does the project Matt Zori never knew he'd complete. A book featuring photos like these. I showed up here one day, everything was, you know, as, as we know it. I, I showed up a week later and the entire floor was gone in the auditorium. And that was the most shocking. Zori has always told me what he's enjoyed most about being here is watching, working with, and meeting the people who have called this building home for 16 months. I was made to feel very welcome here. And this is not my, obviously I'm, I'm not in construction. I am, I could be considered an interloper. When we first met Zori more than a year ago, contractors were hard at work. <laughs> And so was he. Completely guessing on my uh, exposure. His photos are a study in light, contrast, and humanity. Once nearly a resident in this building, this symphony bassist says he suddenly felt like an outsider. Now with the music moving back in, his worlds and art collide. It's reflected in several chapters in his book. We call it grand spaces of the, the process of, of the demolition. Uh, I, I'm hoping that when you turn that page, it's like <laughs> Turning that page to reveal the new music hall. For Matt Zori, it's impressively bittersweet. For the past 16 months, I knew where I was going next. I was coming down here to, to, to see this through. A masterpiece's rebirth also marks an end. I'm not sure what the next photography project is. So the last chapter of this book is appropriately called The Coda, and as you might expect, it's still being written and photographed. Matt's wife has done some of the essay writing. But that last chapter will focus on this weekend and the reactions to the new building and the, reno or the renovation of the building, I should say. Uh, if you're interested, the signs are up across Music Hall. That book should be available for print at the end of next month. Chris and Catherine? All right, Evan, we appreciate it. That might be a great holiday gift Absolutely. as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect timing, too. <laughs> and those early reviews are in. They are good. The folks who have seen this uh, performances here love it already. All right, so let's toss it back to the studio right now. Yeah, Tamika's got some news of the day. We'll check in on weather as well. Guys, how are you? Uh, good morning, Chris and Catherine, and good morning to all of you at home. Uh, topping our story, our news this morning, police now have a suspect in custody after a crash that killed a six-year-old boy. Friends tell not on your side that they loved playing football with little Eli Kent. A car hit him while he was riding his bicycle on 33rd Street in Latonia on Friday afternoon. Police say Christopher Wells was driving and did not stop to help. Court documents now show the driver arrested in a deadly crash in Mount Healthy admitted to driving drunk beforehand. The police say 24-year-old James Kleinfelter rear-ended a Jeep on Compton Road near Forest Avenue. The car he hit then hit two other vehicles. The driver of the Jeep did not survive. Police say Kleinfelter drove off, later causing a second crash in Colerain Township. And now let's get a check of your nine first morning forecast with Barack Shapiro. Hey, we do have some showers in the forecast for us today, but it'll be later this afternoon. Okay. So all is looking good right now. Let's start off here with what's happening on uh, your future view. And this is the latest coming in. We're going to start off at one o'clock this afternoon because that's when things are relatively quiet. We'll put it into motion here as we head into about five and six. You'll notice showers out to our west. They really ramp up as we head into eight and really 11 o'clock this evening. It's part of a front that's going to work its way through. This is at midnight latest projections holding it back just a smidge here, but still some pretty heavy boomers here uh, overnight into tomorrow morning. Some of them could be feisty, giving us maybe an isolated severe thunderstorm morning. Even tomorrow morning still left over with some very heavy rains, and unfortunately it does look like this will continue even into tomorrow. So kind of a sloppy forecast. For those of you who have friends running the Queen Bee Half Marathon here, temperature is actually a little warm, but at least it's dry. So that's good. 70 by about 9 o'clock, 83 at 3. Our high will bank in at 84. That is 15 above where we should be 
for this time of year. So a really warm day coming our way. If you have plans to be out and about today, make sure you have that umbrella really for later today. More chances for rain overnight into Sunday and then again Sunday into Monday. Really a sloppy forecast with highs staying above average through Wednesday, cooling off for Thursday and Friday. Let's send it back out to the field. All right, Brock, we appreciate it. Still to come on the music coming home. We're going to let you be a fly on the wall during one of the rehearsals here at Music Hall, and we'll hear from music director Louis Longre about what to expect this season. And a reminder, we are streaming exclusive content this morning. For those of you on Facebook Live, you're about to hear the meticulous process of checking Music Hall's acoustics during the restoration. And in speaking of, here's a quick sample from the symphony. Just a little bit of the rehearsal from the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. And we spoke with uh, the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra music director, Louis Longre, about what this means and this grand reopening. He says, of course, it's a major event for musicians, for the audience, for the city, for everyone involved. He says also to expect a huge variety when it comes to the music you'll hear from the CSO this season. There is no reason not to come to Music Hall. There is not one style which is not presented to the to the audience uh, and that that's something very very special now there is a second grand reopening performance tonight it's at eight o'clock and the entire concert schedule by the way uh, for both the cincinnati symphony and the pops you can find right now at cincinnati symphony Org. You know, it's not just the CSO that's excited about the grand reopening of this beautiful building. Also, another group is excited. They're so excited, you could say they're on the tip of their toes. <laughs> they're always on the tips of their toes, though. The Cincinnati Ballet will tell you what's next for, uh, for that organization and when the dancers will take that music hall stage. Evan. And there is already a buzz of activity backstage here at the Reimagined Music Hall. Reminder, we are streaming this live on Facebook so it doesn't stop during the commercial break. Uh, if you go over to the WCPO 9 on your side page right now, I'm going to show you the changes you won't see if you just come and sit in Springer Auditorium. That's happening right now on Facebook. Welcome back to Washington Park as we're celebrating the grand reopening of Music Hall alongside Catherine Nero. I'm Chris Reeve on this glorious Saturday morning. Couldn't be better. And uh, what a great day to open up Music Hall. One of the organizations really excited about uh, a new home at Music Hall is the Cincinnati Ballet. It's promising its most spectacular season ever. You know, its uh, headquarters is right around the corner there, but they've got new studio space inside Music Hall. And Artistic Director Victoria Morgan says the ballet is thrilled to be part of this building's rebirth. I feel like it's such a community event and it's an important part of our cultural history. When you think about the performances and the artists who have been there and now with this transformation, you know, I feel like it, it continues in Over the Rhine and Washington Park and all the energy that's happening with your revitalization. I, I, I'm just, I'm so excited about it. And the ballet returns to the stage at Music Hall October 16th with Romeo and Juliet. And of course, mid-December, the Nutcracker will take the stage here oh, as well. Oh, it will be yeah. beautiful. So a lot of exciting things to come here. More to come on our special as well. And a reminder, if you go online to our Facebook page, you'll see some exclusive content during our commercial breaks. Yes, streaming exclusively on the Nine on Your Side Facebook page during the break. Tanya O'Rourke is going to take a look at the before and after shots of Music Hall. Right there. They're on our website right now at WCPO.com. And ahead. Now, he's focused on the notes, but to get there, he's one CSO musician that had to focus on his family and rescuing them from Puerto Rico. We'll have that story coming up. Performance ready, but family is on the line for one CSO musician, how he's helping his family members from Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. And this half hour, we're going to check in with the Opera and the May Festival and when they headline their own opening weekends. And the CSO's concert master out for almost a year after surgery, his road to recovery before he hit the stage last night. And welcome back once again 
to music comes home as we celebrate the grand reopening of Cincinnati's Music Hall. It's really a community celebration and today the community is actually invited to come down here to Washington Park, right? The backdrop of Music Hall right there so they could see it up close for themselves. And there will be stages set up in Washington Park for free performances. There will also be more than 50 performances during the event running from 10 until 3. No tickets are going to be required so that's great. It's free for that and the entire region obviously is invited. The event is going to be by the way hosted by Artswave. And of course the centerpiece of it all is Music Hall and joining us now is the Vice President of Communications for the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, Chris Pinello. Chris, you have been intimately involved in this for the last year and a half. You must be thrilled to have this open. It is uh, a, a real moment. In fact, last night when we had our first concert back and the audience stood as the orchestra walked out on stage, goosebumps, literally. It was a magical evening. Such a beautiful building. It's iconic. It's treasured. It is Cincinnati. And we're so glad to have the community back at Music Hall, and we're happy to be home at Music Hall as well. How did the first couple of performances go? It is, the acoustics are more alive than ever. The building is more accessible, it's more welcoming, but the, the sound is just, it is so present in every single seat. It is something to behold and experience. Now, Chris, you're, you're a trained professional musician. I'm a guy that listens to the radio. <laughs> I mean, will I notice the difference being not a very an excellent you know, ear, so to speak, when it comes to music? You actually will. The, if you were sitting before the renovation far behind in the recesses of the under the balcony, the sound was kind of lost back there. There are no more lost seats. It is all very alive. You feel the bass playing. You feel the, 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 the reverberations through your bones. Um, yeah, I say honestly, I think this is one of the best concert halls in the world. And you guys have been to a ton of them. This, this year alone, you've been to Asia. <laughs> you've been to Europe. Now back here, what are, what's the reaction of the musicians? They must be thrilled to have this new home. They are. They are. In fact, you can see it all through social media last mm -hmm. night from the musicians. Um, we've got them on risers so they can actually see each other better. They can also hear each other better. The better communication as an ensemble. They're also out in the same room for the first time. Before, they were pushed farther back. About a third of them were behind the proscenium. So to actually have the orchestra all in the same room together, but also in the same room as the audience. This, you I have a feeling you're kind of like a duck. Above water, everything looks calm, but below <laughs> water, your feet have been moving. What a process this has really been for the last year and a half. Extraordinarily complex. Uh, and three, I must credit 3CDC, the design team, Messer Construction. This is an historic, beautiful landmark. It's also a vibrant community gathering place, and it's the home of so many great arts organizations. All of that input, and to put it all together, the sun is shining. Yeah, it's oh, beautiful. it's beautiful. Could not Absolutely be beautiful morning right now. Chris, Chris we appreciate thank Thanks you so much. much. I know you've been pretty much around the clock, basically on our air. He's like yeah. a correspondent for <laughs> us here this morning. We might need morning. to pay you at some point <laughs> this week. So Music Hall, of course, draws talent from across the world, especially when it comes to the people performing. And one of those musicians is principal violist, violist Christian Kohlberg. So he has been in the States for years, but he grew up in Puerto Rico. And we all know what happened in Puerto Rico. Much of his family was there when Hurricane Maria rolled through. As Christian Kohlberg and the rest of the CSO prepare for this new beginning at Music Hall, his family is starting over as well. They have no water, no electricity, no cell phones. His mother, father, and uncles were living in Puerto Rico when Maria rolled through. Kohlberg brought his father to Cincinnati to live in his home indefinitely. These are all one-way tickets because we don't know when they'll be able to get back. All I know is that they're going to be here with me, safe, in my house, and we will return them to Puerto Rico to their home when we can. His uncles are staying with friends in Vermont, and his mother just got out of Puerto Rico this week. She's living with Kohlberg's brother in Baltimore. It pulls us together as Puerto Ricans. Uh, we Puerto Ricans, we, we we're proud. And so when, when you hear the mayor say, please help us, um, that's saying a lot. And he says, if you want to do anything to help, open up your home. He yeah. said it's kind of like a disaster relief Airbnb, which I thought was a really <laughs> interesting way to look at it. We've talked about the CSO and the pops and the ballet, but what would this place be without the Cincinnati Opera? That is right. And here is a look actually at the dress rehearsal from last season. The opera is going to join the CSO later this month. Talk about the combination there. It'll be Friday, October 20th for their performance on the 20th and 21st. The art director there tells us the music hall is such a spectacular experience. We now have the perfect marriage of indoor and outdoor love for our city. Unique in the United States, there is no other city in the USA that has a world-class concert hall 
and a world-class park that is like the living room of the concert hall. And the opera, world-class performers as well. Subscriptions for the 2018 opera season now are available if you're interested. Single tickets also will be available in the spring. I think you can tell everyone involved in this is so excited. Yeah. They are so thrilled to have this open. Let's go back inside and take a look at some of the more uncovered treasures. Evan Millward's in there with the latest for us. Yeah, hey, Catherine, one of the things that I know Chris Pinello likes to talk about is how they managed to add thousands of square footage to Music Hall without actually adding on any building. Here's one of the areas they did it. This is actually pretty historic. It doesn't look like much. This is the scene and, and design shop here, and it's two floors, as you can see. It used to be much, much bigger. This actually used to be where they played UC basketball. Ezra Charles boxed here. But if you come in, here's one of the spaces that they reclaimed, as they like to say, and added square footage. And this is really, really uh, utility. It is a rehearsal studio. It's an event space. It is everything. You can see there are some dancers getting ready here already. Uh, I want to show you something that you can do if you, uh, if you come in this weekend. Oh, excuse me. I'm in everyone's way, but something I thought was really neat and I want to show you guys. If you come this weekend, you can sign the time capsule. Check this out. Check it out. So I'm going to do that while we send it back to you guys and I want in on this. I know Ramsey, our photographer, is going to do it too. What a cool way to be a part of history, right? Evan, that is awesome. So save a little space for Catherine and I. We'll come in <laughs> after the show as well. Of course, now we were in front of the Taft Theater mm -hmm. last summer bringing you Luminosity because that was the home of the CSO during the renovation. And the 70s had, as we mentioned before, a, kind of a whirlwind here. They went to Asia and just got back from Europe after a three-week performance stint there. Six countries, mm -hmm. including the Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, France. They were incredibly well received there, including sold out performances. Think about that at the BBC proms at the prestigious Royal Royal Albert Hall in London. Here are some highlights. And so in addition to the European tour, again, an Asian tour earlier this year, they've been all over and everywhere they go. They call it an American sound that the CSO has. They, it's clear that it is one of the leading orchestras you know, in this country. Imagine all of the world travel they've had to do and the performances they've had to do while making sure attention to detail is getting done here as well. So what an effort. Exactly. And the best part is there's lots more European highlights to come. For our Facebook friends, if you guys are live on Facebook, you will be able to hear more of those highlights coming up right now. Stay with us. Good morning, Tri-State. I'm Tamika Artis. We will get back to our special Music Comes Home on the grand opening of the Music Hall. But first, uh, here are your top stories this morning. Police in Las Vegas are now interviewing call girls in the hopes of finding a motive for the shooting that killed nearly 60 people. Investigators believe Stephen Paddock may have hired a prostitute during the days before the shooting at the Mandalay Bay. Police also say Paddock bought 1,000 tracer bullets about a month ago from a separate uh, private seller. Rather, that ammo has been traced to a man in Arizona. Also, one man is facing charges after a deadly crash in Mount Healthy. Police say 24-year-old James Kleinfelter rear-ended a Jeep on Compton Road near Forest Avenue. The car he hit then hit two other cars. The driver of the Jeep did not survive. Police say Kleinfelter drove off, later causing a second crash in Colerain Township. And here is a check now of your 9 First Warning forecast with our new meteorologist, Barack Shapiro. Yeah, glad to be here. Well, let's start off first with a live look outside. This is uh, in part from the Queen Bee Half Marathon. You can see them running right there. Uh, definitely a good start to the day for the Half Marathon. For those of you who like warmer weather, then this forecast definitely for you, considering temperatures have started off about 15 to 20 above where they should be. Most of us in the upper 60s when we should be in the upper 40s. We've got some storms coming our way, so let's take a look here at the latest from Future View. This is at 1 o'clock, mostly cloudy skies. You might see some peaks of blue here and there, but generally a lot of clouds for today. We head into 7 o'clock this evening. Storms are already starting to build in into our northwestern zones. Some of these could be pretty strong, especially overnight into tomorrow. Maybe a severe thunderstorm warning possible. This is at midnight. 
you can see some pretty hefty downpours, claps of thunder and also a little bit of lightning as well through two o'clock in the morning, pushing off to the east even tomorrow morning, still dealing with some heavier storms in our southeastern zones here. So it's something we'll continue to watch. And of course, Sherry will have the latest for you tonight. So let's take a look at the Queen Bee Half Marathon forecast. 70 degrees uh, about now. We're looking at 78 here as we head to lunchtime and then 83 by 3 o'clock. The high today, though, should be about 84, which is 15 above where we belong for this time of year. Here's a look at the seven day forecast warm through Wednesday with small sh uh, with chances for showers here and there. And then by Thursday and Friday, finally coming back down to normal. Let's head back out live to Chris and Kathy. All right, Brock, we appreciate it as we're live in Washington Park for the grand reopening of Music Hall. Still to come, a storm of inspiration. Quite literally, yeah, the May Festival Chorus uses a bit of history for its return to Music Hall, how a stormy night inspired its upcoming performance. And you can't go to the movies without popcorn, right? Well, now you're going to be able to get Finley Market treats for the symphony. This is a Facebook Live exclusive coming up as we'll have our continuing content during the commercial break online. Good morning, Tri-State. Once again, Catherine Nero, Chris Rebo. We're live in Washington Park for the grand reopening of Music Hall. So I guess for our next story, get ready for the storm. You know it. So <laughs> the May Festival, of course, which is a huge draw here, will be joined by the symphony. And the concert is called The Storm That Built Music Hall, November 4th and 5th. And the whole story of this is that in their previous um, uh, location in the 1870s, they had a tin roof on this place and there was a huge storm and it drowned out the singers and the <laughs> orchestra members. So they decided we need somewhere else to play. Enter Music Hall, a little piece of history happening next month. The piece we're doing in November, the first week in November, the, the Brahms piece was first done here in 1876. The only time it's been done. That's only six years after the composer wrote it and conducted it himself. So, I mean, that, it just seeps into your bloodstream. And you can uh, buy tickets for that right now. It shows you the history of this, of this place and of mm -hmm. the organizations that yeah. reside in it. Well, speaking of history, also, there are a lot of opportunities to bring other businesses and other folks that are in Over the Rhine together for Music Hall. And we're talking about just a good business here of the opportunity for the entire community and basically at the event center in Over the Rhine. So they're bringing in Funky's Catering and it's going to cater to places like Music Hall and Memorial Hall, which is really basically mm -hmm. the next door neighbor to Music Hall. And they say it's being part of the community is so important and that's what Over the Rhine is about, community and the history of Cincinnati. And they're already noticing a really big pickup thanks to the Music Hall restoration. Actually, it, uh, it was an interesting couple of years as we were making that transition coming down here and, and watching everything be built around us and, and knowing that what's going to end up happening like, uh, kept us moving forward and kept us excited about the investment that we made in Over to Ryan in the first place. Huh, so that's good call. It's good business, and it's great to see other businesses being incorporated to there. All right, so I feel like this is like an injury report for a sporting it is, event yet. It is. Coming up, a major player <laughs> for the orchestra, Sideline. That's right, the year-long recovery process for the concert master here at the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. And stay with us, a gruesome find on the mission to restore beauty on Facebook only. Facebook only, people. We're going to take you back to when crews found human remains within Music Hall. It's a streaming exclusive. Go to Facebook Live right now, WCPO 9 on your side. And here's yet another opportunity to check out the renovation. CET, PBS station here in Cincinnati, has been documenting the rehab for two years. Watch the documentary, Cincinnati Music Hall, The Next Movement, on November 16th at 9 p.m.
Welcome back as we are live in Washington Park, right in front of Music Hall for the grand reopening there. So when it comes to the orchestra, arguably the might be the most important position, if you will, or musician, is the concert master at the violin's first chair. That's right. So he or she sits right next to the conductor, serves as kind of a leader within the ranks, performs all the solos if there are violin solos. But for almost a year, that leader of the CSO was on the disabled list to continue the sports theme. Timothy Lee's had a neck injury that required surgery, and let's keep that sports analogy going. It was the equivalent of a pitcher having Tommy John surgery. The recovery has been more um, a little bit of retraining in the left hand uh, to, to get the, the nerves and the muscles and the brain, the neurons firing all together so that everything works properly. It's going very, very well. And it did go well. He was back in first chair last night. We'll be back again tonight. He missed the European tour and he was upset about that, but at the very least he's back leading the CSO. I'm glad to see that. Glad to see that indeed. So we obviously are outside in Washington Park. The sun is shining on Music Hall. Let's go back inside right now with our colleague Evan Millward, who is showing you the inside in the beautiful restoration there. It's beautiful, Chris, and it's comfortable. I'll tell you what, one of the things they tout is how much extra space they added. They added inches of legroom and I'm a big dude and I fit pretty comfortably up here. They added width to all of these seats. It cost them nearly a thousand seats in the auditorium, but it pays off and we're in the back row up here. The acoustics back here, I've always argued were pretty good, uh, but I am now told that the goal that they have nailed was that every seat had the same sound experience. You know, our tour may be done inside now because our time is up, but come out this weekend, pick up a visitor's guide. It'll tell you everything you want to know about Music Hall. I'll leave you with the view from the balcony. Take a look at that. The crystal chandelier refreshed, the proscenium refreshed. All we need now are the musicians on stage. We'll send it back to you guys, Chris and Catherine. Evan, we appreciate it. Isn't it beautiful? Just absolutely beautiful, that chandelier this morning. So we want to get you one more check of weather. It's beautiful here, but let's... Guys, thank you so much. What a beautiful transformation there at Music yes. Hall. And as far as the weather goes, any transformation in store? Warm. Yes, <laughs> unfortunately tonight there will be a risk for some feisty storms, some strong storms overnight. Of course, Sherry will have the latest tonight. Storm Prediction Center highlighted us under a uh, marginal risk for severe weather. So not set in stone, but something to be aware of. Today, highs will be in the middle 80s. A warm day. That's 15 above the average. So if you like this, enjoy it. All right, just keep the umbrellas handy. Yes. Alrighty guys, we appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in to our special coverage of the grand reopening of Music Hall. And thanks for joining us on Facebook Live as well as we had exclusive content that you could see there. And for Chris Riva, I'm Catherine Nero. This is just the beginning though of Music Hall and its reconfiguration and transformation to yet another icon. More so of an icon here and over the Rhine. We want to leave you with some more of the Cincinnati Symphony's concert. Have a great day.